Hey, hi, and hello there. Quern here, doing something a little different. Uh, giving my opinion on a video game, which is actually something I do quite often on my stream. Speaking of which, over the past few weeks, I've been indulging myself in a little bit of the New World beta here and there. I've been feeling the nostalgia of WoW Classic sort of burning out, and seeing the recent news about Activision Blizzard, I can't wait to see which storm mount they release to satiate that situation. But really though, we can talk about that at another time. Uh, but today's burning question is, New World, should you order? See what, see what I did there? It's like New World, okay, you get it, you get it, you get it. This highly anticipated upcoming release from Amazon Game Studios could shake up the MMO genre. Or it could do, as many other MMOs have done, exploding onto the scene before the players move on to the next big game to agitate their endorphin. Hopefully leaving behind a dedicated base of players that really vibe with what New World has to offer. Amazon Game Studios has not really released a game yet that has a widespread and long-lasting appeal. But that doesn't mean that their games are duds. I think the studio has extreme potential, and I've thought so ever since I played Crucible. You guys, you guys remember Crucible? It was all right. Keep in mind this studio is funded by one of the biggest companies on earth. But just because you've got funding doesn't guarantee that you're going to put out a banger. It just guarantees that many people in your game will be named after Bezos. Jumping right into it, in terms of aesthetics, the game looks quite good. So good, in fact, it might potentially burn out your graphics card. I found myself really enjoying the design and layouts of the cities that I visited. You could tell a lot of work went into them. Some people just complained that the cities were confusing, but in my opinion, wandering around and getting a feel for where things were located is definitely part of the experience that they wanted to cultivate. It allows you to appreciate more of what they have to offer. All of the landscapes outside of the cities uh, turned out to be quite fun to explore while I was going about my questing. And I only felt frustrated or got stuck a couple times, which really isn't that bad. Having the game set in the Age of Exploration is definitely a unique choice. And given your characters are exploring this magical island, it actually works out to be quite fitting. And while I applaud any game that tries something unique and new and exciting, it's great, uh, the armor sets, uh, despite having a wide range of looks and a, a very, very clean look to them, uh, they just lacked any feel of prestige based on this look. Sure, I could look like a dread pirate or a musketeer, but what was I truly gaining from these armor sets? It's all somewhat irrelevant when I can just get the perfect armor set and weapons and yada 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 from my faction vendor and so can everyone else and guess what they all look exactly the same regardless of what faction you picked so there's just gonna end up looking very similar either way that all aside my biggest gripe beyond all that uh, is the magnificently lackluster character creation everyone is a human of the same height and build uh, with the only variation given to skin, hair, and face. I really enjoy character creation. If I'm going to be spending hours upon hours playing a character, the better I can customize them, the more connected I'm going to feel. And in today's MMOs, I feel that that's something that's very important and sometimes kind of slept on. Beyond that, beyond the aesthetics, there are two primary systems in the game that I would also like to discuss. The combat and the crafting, both of which have some good points and they have some bad points. You can tell that in a game like this, combat is key. It is very important to get right. And in my experimentation, I feel that there's still quite a bit of smoothing out that needs to be done. The lack of animation cancels leaves your character in whatever weapon swing, you know, big or small, uh, without the opportunity for on-the-fly improvisation. When using the musket, I would shoot the enemy a couple times when they until they got up in my face, and then I would dodge their attack, and then I would be rewarded with a longer reload time spent backpedaling away from the enemy where they were just they would just attack me anyway. I think the musket musket definitely 
could use some work. When trying to kite enemies around with my spear, I found that there was always a wind-up time for my character to start running. It felt like I wasn't limited to my own reactions and skill timings, but rather the speed the game would lock me down to. It would be interesting to see a parry mechanic added to the game that rewarded you for proper timing, but I'm not going to hold my breath. Now the crafting, the crafting is extensive, and I actually really like the amount that went into making it feel like with the proper dedication you could skill up very quickly. It does a good job of encouraging the player to explore the environments around them. However, when every player can do every profession, there's less need for player cooperation in it, but it does allow for a variety of day-to-day -day grinding, similar to the skill grinding in RuneScape, which a lot of people really enjoy. It also can be quite overwhelming to kick off and start working on all your crafting skills with, all, with there being so many. Uh, however, it seems as though it could be quite rewarding. I'd like to follow all of this up with saying that this is just tied to my experience in the game. I don't think there's anything wrong with having disagreements over it. While leveling, I found myself extremely bored with the manner of extremely repetitive questing. Go to an area, neither loot all the boxes in the area, kill X number of mobs, or kill X named mob. Not only that, but all the mobs felt way too similar. No matter where I went, it was either some animal or some zombie-like creature with a similar attack pattern to the previous wild animal or zombie creature that I had already fought. I decided to educate myself further with watching streams to see if these issues improved at higher levels. And I can say the environment teams are absolutely putting in work to make sure that New World looks good, especially in dungeons. And the attack patterns of many of the humanoid mobs does vary from area to area in some interesting ways. However, in many encounters outside of giant mobs, it is less beneficial to dodge or block than it is to just smork your abilities uh, to damage down the enemy as quickly as possible. Now, in terms of PvP, I found a lot of similar rules apply to New World as with most MMOs. If the enemy has a numbers advantage, it's usually better to just run. If the enemy has a better PvP weapon slash build, uh, you might be in for trouble. And if the enemy has snuck up on you while you're weakened, good luck. Anytime there is a perceived advantage, it will be used. I think the environments allow for very creative, large-scale engagements to take place. Uh, take for the example, I noticed as a syndicate lad that many of the marauders were camping across roads near a town because uh, the syndicate had recently staked a claim on the area. And so me, being big brain, thought probably best to not be flagged for PvP and leave the town directly. I'm going to do something a little different. I took my musket, my terrible, terrible musket. I went over to a hill nearby the crossroads and I just start pinging enemies. I just pop, pop, pop. I'm just firing into this crowd near the crossroads that's, you know, trying to kill my buddies. And sooner or later, I get the attention of a few of them that start rushing at me. And as soon as I got three or four of them coming after me, trying to take me down, I dip, I retreat. How did the rest of that little engagement turn out? Did I help dispel the, the campers? I, I really have no idea. Uh, but I felt like I did my job, and I felt like I did something cool, even though I did, like, no damage. I have no idea how it turned out in the end, but what I do know is that faction conflicts only really matter once an officially scheduled conflict takes place. So, yeah. The stories and experiences in the game, long term, will mostly be created by the players themselves through these territory conflicts, like the story that I just told. As far as I could dive into the lore, the most I could really say is that there is some semblance of a storyline. There's corruption plaguing the land, and you're fighting against it. Most of the starting zones seem to have a relatively similar story and format. I am a huge lore nerd for the games that I play, so this was a little bit disappointing, and I'll just leave it at that. Beyond that, it seems like the cash shop drama has mostly died down, hopefully, and for good reason. Uh, MMO players are tired of being milked, and they're desperately trying to find the next big thing, as you can tell by the explosion of players onto the fan- 
On to the Final Fantasy XIV grind. Unfortunately, I have yet to begin my journey as a cat boy, but it appears as though many people are enjoying the migration and find the game scratches that MMO itch. The question of if New World will do the same remains to be seen. I think the game has a lot of elements and framework in place for greatness, but it is assuredly not there yet. Beyond all the bug fixes and stuff like that, it'll be interesting seeing where the game goes from here. Regardless of if the game sells well or not, uh, Amazon, and perhaps by extension, Amazon Game Studios, will still be around. And, like I said, the game has a good framework for something fun. And so, I guess we'll see where it goes. Thank you for watching, I'm Quern. If you have an opinion or a thought about New World that you had while playing it, I'd love to hear it. If you got some feedback for my thoughts on it, feel free to go ahead and throw a comment down below. I, I'd be very interested to see what other people have to say about it. Uh, beyond that, thank you for watching. I'll see you in the next one.